Hey there toy collector friends and Star Trek fans alike. Welcome back to the channel. This is the time traveling toy collector and this is the hero collector Eagle Moss Star Trek Starships collection XL version of the USS Enterprise 1701 as it appears in the TV series Star Trek Discovery. So yes, this is the variation of the USS Enterprise under the command of Captain Pike um, in the days before Kirk and the days before the original Star Trek series. Um, this is the edition that was uh, best, that really does an excellent job in representing the model shots, uh, be they CGI or otherwise, from the TV series US uh, TV series Discovery. And again, they do a really really exquisite job um, there are subtle differences in the model design and the paneling of this variation of the Enterprise from how it appears in the original series for example which is the next um, iteration of the ship uh, in the traditional Star Trek timeline um, and we can see how it's evolved. There is some beautiful detailing and some colorization on the overall hull of the ship that really links it in to the NX-01 Enterprise that uh, Captain Archer had that we've, we've seen in, a, in another review um, and bridges the gap between that and if you like the, the standard classic series USS Enterprise um, that Captain Kirk made a uh, household name, if you like, throughout the 60s and beyond when Star Trek the original series aired. Um, we have some wonderful detailing in terms of the use of the plastics here. Again, uh, the Bassard collectors on the nacelle, the warp engine stripes, strips on the, on the, on the, um, the nacelles themselves. Um, we have a, a, a filled in deflector dish. It's a, a gold, bronzy gold deflector dish there. And as ever, we can see the um, shuttle bay doors there. The detailing remains a constant with the uh, Starfleet insignia along the side. Um, and I'm gonna do a little bit of a, an aerial maneuver, all being well here. So we can take a, an aerial shot downwards over the top of the saucer section and the bridge that you can see there coming into focus as it rotates round. Um, some gaps in the nacelle struts that uh, attach to the main drive section of the ship. And as we come back in again, as you see the uh, rear of the ship, you can also see quite clearly the uh, impulse engines tucked there behind the saucer section. Um, a really beautiful and lovely design. Um, what I'm gonna do now is try and stop it without sending it hurtling into orbit itself so we can do an in-hand close-up um, of the Enterprise itself. So bear with me as I try and make it so. Okay, so here we have the USS Enterprise in all its glory. Um, as I mentioned before, you have the plastic detailing uh, pulling out the highlights of the Bussard collectors. And also we can see in the nacelles themselves, we'll look closer at that in a second. Um, We've got some lovely detailing around the saucer section itself where you can see the variety of rooms that are picked out through the various um, windows and cabins that can be seen across the hull. Um, I'm now going to perform the trick which I always hate which is taking the ship off the stand. I'm always very reluctant to do that because I know one of these days it won't go the way I want it to. So here we are. And again, like all the Excel ships, this is a beautifully crafted piece of work. Um, we can see there the level of detailing that goes into the manufacture of this ship. We can see the wonderful fins that are on there. Uh, we can see the detailing um, of the panel work. I'm going to come in a bit closer to the, um, the drive section there. Look at all of the different windows individually painted in. Um, are they all exactly accurate? Well, I for one have not done that close a study, but I think it's as accurate as certainly I would need it to be. Um, the detailing on the, the uh, standard uh, Federation insignia across the, across the body of the ship is beautifully raised up. It's beautifully pulled out. I'm gonna just come over here so we can take a look at the top of the saucer section. 
um, USS Enterprise there in all its glory. Uh, and we can see the, the, uh, the bridge there pulled out in some very lovely paintwork, some very nice detailing across the, across the whole hull. Um, this feels like a lived in, well used ship. Um, and we can see uh, that it, it really does have some heft. Uh, it's predominantly a pewter base um, with some, I think there's some, there's some die cast metal in there as well. Um, but yeah, you can, I mean, look at the panelling work on this. Look at all of the detailing that has gone into making this um, the model that it, that it absolutely deserves to be. Um, again, as I've said with other ships that are, I'm sorry, just coming in there to see the, um, the impulse engines beautifully pulled out there with, uh, with some red paint detailing. Um, yeah, my comment there, a little bit about the, uh, the, the, the fragility of these. They are not really, um, I mean, I, I'm quite c comfortable holding it in my hand uh, and, and using it for some, some poses, particularly in some photography work. But in all honesty, this is not something to be played with. It is um, a display model. It has um, the fragility of a display model, shall we say. So it will not stand up to an awful lot of um, aggression <laughs> or banging or uh, robust play, I think is how I've described it in the past. Uh, yeah, they're, they're not designed for a robust play. Let me put it a little bit more towards us so we can get a sense of the scale of it. Um, but yeah, this is a, it's a beautiful ship. I'm gonna rotate it slightly manually. It's a beautiful ship, it's a beautiful design. Um, the detailing uh, continues to be outstanding. Uh, Hero Collector, I know some people feel that the models can be a bit hit and miss and sometimes the paint detailing can be a bit problematic. Uh, for me, I've not had issues really with the paint detailing on the Enterprise, on the Starship, uh, Star Trek Starship collections. Um, I appreciate that may be more of an issue with the smaller pieces in the in the general collection, where some of because of the scale of the pieces, it must be much much harder, much much harder to get some of that paintwork done in such a way that it is not only screen accurate, um, but actually neat and accurately placed with on on the model itself as as the designers no doubt intended it to be. Um, I just need to take a minute here, just because I've just, I know I'm just rotating it around, but look at the, look at how gorgeous the lines of this ship are. Now, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to sit here and gush, but I find it very hard not to, because it's really, it's really beautiful. And, you know, if you're not necessarily a fan of uh, starships from the, uh, the Star Trek universe, uh, what's wrong with you? I mean, look at this. It's it's beautiful. I know there's nothing wrong with you. Don't worry. I'm just jesting. But seriously, this is a fantastic, fantastic, endearing design, endearing model ship. Um, it is every bit the classic, uh, you know, star star uh, starship that you would have to explore the universe. I would be very happy to be a part of the crew of this ship. I can tell you now. Um, the XL range is a considered purchase. You know, A, you have to consider where you're going to put it because they don't do you any favours sitting in a box. But equally, they are quite sizable. I'm very fortunate I've got a cabinet where I can keep the majority of mine on display. Um, but it is something to consider if you're thinking about investing in them. And again, let's not forget, it is an investment. These pieces are not cheap. But by the same token, you are getting a very high quality piece to display. You know, this is this is arguably a piece of art. Um, and I, for one, think like all good pieces of art, it needs to be seen. Does it have a place in your collection? Well, only you can answer that. From my money, it absolutely does. Uh, and I would 100% recommend it to anyone who was considering collecting any of the XL Starships. To be perfectly honest, I don't have all of the XL Starships. I've been very selective in terms of picking and choosing 
which ones I have considered going after. Um, and I've mainly stuck to enterprise, uh, the enterprises through time and one or two other uh, very familiar ships which or star stations which um, I'm more than happy to share with you all as we go through. Um, but yeah, my recommendation is if you're at all enamoured with Star Trek starships, th this is a beautiful piece. In many ways, the detailing on this one is, is superior to the detailing on the sort of hero ship from the classic series, which is almost battleship-like, and I mean that in the traditional um, Navy battleship-esque type of design, where there's very little panelling on display. It's a very smooth surface. Um, this actually has a little, well, significantly more panelling, significantly more detailing, because of course it's based on a ship that was um, designed with far greater access to computer-aided design and technolo not technological advancements than the ship of the 1960s, um, and therefore that's very much reflected in the overall design and the nuances uh, to the design. Um, I can only give this a huge thumbs up. I think it's fantastic. So if you were even considering getting it, um, invest. Invest in it, and if you don't like it, sell it on. Somebody will buy it. But to be honest, I think once you have this in hand, you'll be like, okay, I need to start collecting these starships now. This is an incredible range. Um, so I hope this has been useful. I hope it's encouraged you to consider possibly putting this variation of the USS Enterprise into your collection, possibly even embracing the, the uh, Hero Collector Starships uh, of Star Trek collection from the beginning. Maybe this is your, this can be your entry point into that collection. They are available on their website and you can absolutely pick and choose which ones you want rather than subscribe um, to a monthly or fortnightly, whatever it might be. Uh, collection you go in and you just buy what you would like to have so if this uh, floats your boat then go in and grab it while there are still stocks available because I can tell you now they won't last forever so has this helped you make up your mind if it has do let me know in the comments below um, I think it would make a great addition to anyone's collection you've probably gathered that um, but I do like to know if it's helped in any way, shape or form, uh, encourage you to reach out and purchase uh, the product. If this has been useful, do please give me a thumbs up. Also, you might want to give the, uh, the channel a subscription and equally turn on those cheeky little notifications so that you never miss a future review of a Starship. Perhaps one that you're not sure about, you'd like to see in hand a little bit more um, so you can make your own mind up. Similarly, uh, you might be interested in looking at the Transformers toys, new and old, or Doctor Who, or Star Wars, or goodness knows what else. So do please give me a follow, check out my Instagram page at the Time Travelling Toy Collector, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. You've been a fantastic audience. Take care, keep safe, and remember, a thing of beauty is a toy forever. One to beam up.